Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. And so, after our Strolvar killed his first troll, he and the demon slayer Snorri Stonebreaker continued east along the snowy slopes of Peak Pass, until they finally left its lofty shelter and entered into the Dark Lands proper. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never explored the Dark Lands. Although, uh, that said, I have sailed along its southern coast, in and around the waters of the Sea of Dread, including the area near the Straits of Nagash. But, uh, let me tell you, what I saw, even distant as I was, in no way made me want to experience the delights of the Darklands first hand. Oh, yeah. Why, uh, what did you see, Master Tavernkeeper? Uh, I too have uh, not journeyed in that part of the world. Ah, well, young Heinrich, what I saw was darkness. A blackened and burnt coastline, shrouded by black cloud and poisonous smoke plume. But, uh, obviously, Strolvar knew a lot more than I, so I, uh, pressed him on what he himself had seen and experienced during his jaunt through that wondrous landscape. Skeggy, a decade earlier. Once it, after we left the cold familiarity of Peak Pass, it was into the dark lands that we went. We decided to eschew the more commonly used paths, those oft trod that hang under the shadow of the mountain peaks. Instead, rather than ascending and descending their gravelly slopes, we headed out east into the blasted wastes. You can cover a longer distance in a shorter time on the flats, was our thinking. But that was a mistake. Why? What happened? And what was it like? Uh, the Darklands, I mean. I've seen it from the sea, but uh, I got no closer than that. Then you're a wiser individual than me. It is no place for manlings, which is probably why we didn't meet any there. There is no good, nor cheer, and even the vilest of the vile, those that make their home there, do so only out of necessity. For the land hates and rebukes them as much as they hate and pour malice into the land. In the Darklands, our world vents her unfettered fury, and all about has been torn apart, be that by gut-burning mountain or ground-cracking earthquake. The fiery mountains there spew out greedy lava, and choking black smoke up from bottomless caches. Everywhere, pits of sucking tar and black oily ichor exhale a foul stench into the air, as biting winds whip up ash like some funereal fog that glides over plopping, bubbling magma. Magma that refuses to cool, and instead 
forms rivers and lakes, the brittle crusts of their edges ready to crack and break without warning, swallowing and searing off limbs of the unwary. Nothing grows there except for hardy blackthorn, a plant so nasty it can barely be called a plant. All that said, though, Manling, there are liches there for those with an interest in such things. Riches? What do you mean by riches, Strolva? The roiling earth brings up all sorts from the depths of the world. Minerals, gems, gold, silver, iron, copper, diamonds and sapphires. There are also valuable resources there for the taking, such as sulfur, Oil and tar, riches in the minds of many a Dowie. This was the landscape we found ourselves in upon first entering the outskirts of the central plains of the Darklands. But as we moved further southeast, it gave way to a dry, parched desert known as the Blasted Wastes in your Reichspiel. And well earned is its name, Manlink. First and foremost, there is sand, but it is mixed with ash and fine pumice. Violent and powerful winds break over its surface, whipping up dangerous sandstorms and keeping the wastes sterile, empty, and bereft of nature's growths. There are places that were once valleys but are now half filled by sifting, sucking, sand drifts. There are places that were once hills, but many have been eaten into by the gnawing sandstorms and are now unnatural in their shapes and prone to collapsing at but a moment's notice. Obviously, barely anything grows there. But uh, that doesn't mean it's lacking in life. If you can call the nomadic goblin tribes that eke out an existence there, life, that is. It was hard going enough moving from cave to rocky shade to whatever shelter we could find from the burning sun ever on the lookout for watering holes, of which there are a few, to then be beset by gangs of goblins at every twist and turn. <laughs> Kill the stunties! Take their choppers and strip their racks! We'll eat their flesh and boil their bones! Good eatings tonight! <laughs> Death to the scrawny grubby! <laughs> but at least fighting these nomadic goblins kept our axe-swinging muscles in good shape. For before we were able to Get out of the desert, we were beset by a mob of black orcs. Ugh, can I just stop you there a moment, Septimus? What are these black orcs? I've never heard of them. Oh, 
Really? Well, actually, my uncle, Dieter von Torlichelm, the Knight's Panther, uncovered much of their uh, history as part of his duties after once being tasked with taking down a marauding warband of them. He told me much more than is commonly known. 